everyone. We are back with another product roundup where we share the latest news and features and improvements to your Supra CRM solution. Now, as we're in the last month of this year, Jeanette, what more can we talk about? Well, actually, the product team have released a valuable improvement to the navigation and free text search that we think will save everyone a bit of time. I agree. But before we take a look at that, I thought that this is the perfect time for a recap of the main news of 2022, just to ensure that everyone knows about what they now have available. And the best way to do that, we thought to invite in Eric Aida, our Super Office product director. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine and Janet. It's um, very nice to be here and take a trip down memory lane, even if memory lane is just a year old. So um, looking forward to that. Perfect. Well, thank you for taking the time. And before you give us the main recap memory lane, can you share with everybody a little about how you and your team work when it comes to developing SuperOffice? Because you're the one responsible for our product roadmap. That's right. But uh, we, we all are responsible of contributing to, to the good ideas. But basically, we take a stand with our uh, have a look at our product vision and our product vision states clearly that we are going to make software that will improve your working day as a end user. We would like it to make you more efficient, make it more easier and even have fun while working on it. And that's the basis of, of every um, decision or every roadmap that we come up with. Uh, but every year, around uh, by the end of the year, during December, we come up with a roadmap uh, that uh, states what are we trying to start working on during the next 15 months. And uh, a roadmap, particularly last year's roadmap, tip looked like this. Um, we are saying this is what we should work on now. Uh, then we say, just after we finish that, this is what we're going to start with. And when that's done, uh, we go into what's next after that in, in the future. And this is actually a map that does, explains our product strategy on on uh, what we are trying to do. So you could not read the boxes uh, and all of these things, but you can try to see this as a story. If I wrote a book about this every year, um, we could turn this into chapters actually to say what's the what's the idea and what's the strategy and direction we are taking our product so if i were to write a book about our roadmap for 2022 uh, the chapters would look something like this uh, we are going to keep focusing on kpi monitoring by introducing new capabilities in our dashboards for all user groups of, of SuperOffice. And uh, this year we have focused uh, on marketing people and we have focused on uh, salespeople who want to compare their results against their targets. So that's the basic this year. But uh, the chapter is continue to focus on KPIs. Um, another chapter would be named uh, make it possible for you as a company to customize SuperOffice to fit your processes and your needs by offering no code slash low code capabilities into the platform so that you can easily make SuperOffice fit uh, your way of working. And that's uh, uh, the second main chapter. The third main chapter would be to improve our uh, user experience when it comes to request management. We would like um, request management to be a part of the core uh, application of CRM, not a separate uh, tab or, or application that you open when you're going to work with requests. Many people are working with a request, not only the dedicated service agents, uh, even though are very important to, to cover, but uh, by merging these uh, two kind of clients into one uh, user experience is uh, one of the major things we have been working with this year. And the main chapter number four is to start working on building a better story against advanced marketeers. Uh, and this is by introducing what we call uh, marketing automation flows or email flows or something like that. You can build up automations that says, 
first you you use uh, when someone fills in a form send them this email wait uh, some days and then send this email unless they click that link because then you send this email so that kind of story when it comes to to uh, email flows or marketing automation flows is a huge focus that we are starting on now uh, and hope to deliver something during next year but that's a very important chapter in in this book and then of course you have some additional uh, goals we cannot only have these four we have a huge product range so we are going to make sure that super office activities will stay the heartbeat of the system because without activities in a crm system there is really not much data to base your decisions on. So by improving our calendar and activity dialogues and way to invite people to meetings and making this much more efficient uh, or even more efficient than it is today is a main, main effect that we would like to show uh, from this roadmap. Um, we are continuing to, to build seamless integrations into the Windows 365 through what we call our zero footprint initiative. That means you don't have to install anything on your computer. It should just work as a web-based platform against all uh, Windows 365 activities. And uh, SharePoint document, as you mentioned later, is a perfect example of that. Um, when it comes to the mobile client, we think that everyone should experience the fantastic feature set that the mobile client has. What we've done this year is a lot of things, but among uh, the main things is that we have turned, if you want to, your mobile phone into a notification hub. So you will get a notification if you get a new ticket assigned to you, or if you are invited to a meeting, or if a sales needs uh, approval uh, or stuff like that. So it will always uh, notify you on your uh, phone and you can take actions on your phone, or you can get the notification on the phone and uh, move into the web client to, to continue working there. So that's also an important goal. Um, and we also, would like to make more building capabilities uh, for the development tools and CRM script is a fantastic, powerful platform, um, but it's not for all. So, so we would like to make the, yeah, the, how easy it should be for default configurations and default adjustments, minor adjustments, to be like a no code solution. So you don't need these scripts. We will continue to strengthen our scripting language and integration capabilities, but uh, you shouldn't be able to, shouldn't have to write scripts for everything that you do. It should be a part of the built-in in solution. So this is basically what we are talking about when reading such a roadmap. Uh, we uh, try to convert it and see, is this a story that we, uh, invite and then we go on starting production and now we are at the yeah almost at the end of the year and we had to make a done column here because when all of the things that are done is is there we will have to fill up with new things so our task now is to launch a dashboard following this product strategy for the next 15 months starting from january so that will be exciting times but um I think since this is a roundup for the year, uh, I have cherry picked some of, uh, kind of go through everything we've done. You have done a beautiful job job uh, by presenting this throughout the year. In in uh, So I have cherry picked some of my favorites that we uh, could have a quick look at. Perfect. Well, please do. We've had the pleasure of presenting quite a lot of these exciting news over the year. But we really appreciate that you present some of your your favorites, uh, and then and then people can look at the other product roundups for more details later. So go ahead, Eric. Yeah, and just in case you didn't get uh, it, uh, I think something is worth mentioning that should really trigger your interests uh, when it comes to how can we utilize this. Uh, and the first thing I would like to mention is is the, our focus on on. Uh, 
yeah, visualizing data in CRM and starting off with the marketing dashboards and dashboards in general. Why do we the why do we have them? We want to give every user um, fast access to key information, and so to be able to. Um, make good decision based on the data and what's happening inside the inside the super office and by making this focused against different roles in your company you can make sure that the people working with marketing gets these dashboards they want to focus on but people working on sales gets other ones i just wanted to show you a short example of, of what uh, could be done within uh, reporting and showing dashboards on uh, on uh, in in the marketing area and this is of course uh, by using superoffice forms uh, and by using mailings inside superoffice you can start compare performance across forms and across mailings to see what did work and what did not work and you have typically data that you are interested in is uh, What's my average open rate or click-through rate uh, across mailings to identify these mailings are more, more efficient than others? Uh, what kind of subscriptions uh, types uh, when it comes to mailings are most popular? Uh, in this example, you can see that uh, you have a chart where urgent messages is have a 75% open rate, which is, yeah, but it, it, it's in the nature of urgent messengers, uh, maybe. You can see how many uh, leads converted from a form to say how many new contacts did uh, the, have the source of this form that uh, came in. Um, you can compare mailings towards each other and see uh, which is performing best so you can learn and use best practices. Uh, you can track the volume that, of the emails that you are sending and yeah, basically get an overview of your, uh, yeah, all the, your marketing activities uh, gathered from SuperOffice forms and by SuperOffice uh, mailings. So for those of you who hadn't uh, done it, there is, they are in there, they are available, there are, uh, um, very set of templates that you can just uh, click and drag in and start using by the way or adjust them as you want so that's good news for the marketing people who want to follow up on on what they actually uh, how they their work are are being received from the customer side if we have another side of this you can of course say that salespeople are also focused on dashboards and especially following their numbers so um, we introduced the sales targets where you can uh, measure your turnover against your tar sales target uh, we will also then uh, be able to build further on that with the, the product that we called Sales Targets Unlimited. I will come back to that uh, in a short while. And why you need sales targets? It's uh, uh, one thing. Another thing is that when you start diving into this, we would like to start using targets in SuperOffice and compare our sales against our targets. It's actually a perfect way to look at how do we use sales in SuperOffice today? Because this is a reminder that, that we offer quite a lot of, of uh, sales management capabilities that you uh, should consider. Are we using this in the optimal way for our company? Should we exploit how we can improve and do these things? Because we have quite a lot of set when it comes to to, uh, to sales in SuperOffice, you can of course um, have a best practices or a sales guide that takes you through the steps of a sale if you have that kind of sale. You have the possibility to track stakeholders, you have the possibility to track follow-up here, you can see it in your dashboard, you can create quotes, you can send proposals to customers and, and monitor this closely. And as you see, sales targets are just a small piece in this big picture. And when you start talking about all the beautiful apps in our app store related to this uh, uh, set of features, 
you really have a good set of uh, things on your table that you can consider when you're talking about how should we work with sales and super office in an optimal way that will give us most bang for the bucks is that uh, the statement so as you see here sales targets is just uh, it's a bit a part of this big picture but if you take a focus and zoom into the to the uh, to the sales targets it really comes that down to this uh, what you can measure get managed uh, and that's um, really saying it in short so by having your eyes on your target it's easier to focus on your target and uh, that's how it is so just to give you a short introduction of, of the sales targets capabilities this is what everyone gets when they have sales uh, premium as their user plan they will have the possibility to add sales targets to your people and your sales team um, and you can visualize that in your dashboards against your actual sales or weighted amounts or, or anything so uh, the first thing you need to do is of course to make a sale target um, this is either something one uh, person do or he can have everyone go in and do it depending on access rights and stuff but basically you have to have the numbers from somewhere you can say i would like to make targets on quarterly basis or a monthly basis um, and you can choose to say i would like to add for only teams uh, in the, or i would like to add it for individual users that's basically up to you but the numbers gets in you can copy and paste between those import export from excel fill this as you want but the first step is to create a uh, get the numbers in when the numbers are in you can start using those inside a, a dashboard here i have a dashboard not saying anything about targets it's uh, just my forecast this quarter uh, by sales rep if I would like to, to bring the targets into this, I can show you very quickly how you, how you do that. Um, you go in and edit this tile. And the only thing you need to do um, to get this to be compared um, is to uh, go into the layout section and say, compare to target. And then it compares to the target you have added and suddenly you see your actual sales or your forecast against the target you can see it as percentage if you don't want to see the numbers and come uh, uh, but compare everything against 100 percent. so that's also something that you can do and this is a out of the box uh, feature that uh, every uh, sales premium uh, user of super office have and they can start working with it right away and i think it's a no-brainer to go in there and just fill out your your um, target and start measuring and visualizing against it and you can of course use gauges you can use big numbers you can use the tiles that you use to 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 show how to compare to a target so uh, the next step is for people who say wait a minute that's great but we are more, far more advanced than this uh, we measure against uh, several, uh, we have sales targets for almost everything. Um, uh, and we have lots of sales teams in there that would like to, uh, to have different types of, of uh, targets. And we don't uh, only uh, set targets for the sales amounts. We also say we want to set target for profit or we want to set the target even for number of sales that you should have in your pipeline as a salesperson all the time for those people they can take it one step further and uh, make uh, uh, buy the add-on license uh, called sales target and limited and it seems quite complicated but it actually isn't i will dri drive you through a couple of use cases that are relevant uh, so you can see how it's used uh, uh, in the end time so uh, to set the scene, uh, meet John. He is an area sales manager, meaning that he is only responsible for that the districts sells as much as they want. So that he has some sell, sales district. He doesn't care what you sell or who's selling. He just uh, cares about what district uh, gets the 
credited the, each individual sales. And he would like to see, uh, based on his target for these districts, how they are doing. Next person I wanted to say hello to is Kate. Uh, she is a key account manager for partners and she only cares for partner sales. And each partner has an individual target, uh, sales target that she would like to monitor. So she doesn't care about any other sales than the ones performed by a partner. And she wants her targets uh, to be shown in, in the dashboards. So two very easy things. Uh, first of all, John, he sets up uh, a, uh, he makes sure that every customer is tagged with a sales district. So this customer belongs to this district. That's basically the field that he has added to the company card in, in uh, SuperOffice. Kate has done uh, same thing with a sale card. She has said that if there is a selling partner, I can choose this on the sale. This uh, sale uh, belongs to this selling partner. So that's actually what they have to do. Of course, they have to add the targets. So John is going to create a target for his sale district where he fills in the numbers for the four different districts that he has. He doesn't care about individual sales reps. He only cares about uh, the, these districts. So he fills in that data. And then came, uh, Kate comes along and add a new uh, targets were by selling partner and you can see here she have four selling partners in her system and she just fills in that data. So that's basically it. What you do then is that you go to the uh, to the chart I showed you before and make a copy of it and name it uh, the way you want it. So here it's a um, by by sale district, and then she say that I would like to show these uh, columns to be sale districts. So now it moves from showing a sales rep to a sale district, and then it automatically picks up that okay, if you show it by sale district, then you compare it to the sale district target. And now you can see how each selling district is going. And if you see it as percentage, if you don't want to see the number, you see that South and East are doing quite poorly here, but the West is going fantastic against the targets. So these are examples on what it would look like if you would like to see it by a selling district. Um, if you move on to, to the next, so. It's basically two clicks and then you're there after you have, have done it. If you go and have a look at uh, what would it look like if you would like to see it as uh, by the partner, uh, selling partner target, you just change the what kind of columns you would like to see. And here, of course, I would like each column to be a selling partner. So I just type in uh, selling partner as the columns uh, I would like to view this by. And it already then understands, then I should pick up the target for the selling partner. And now you can see how each selling partner is doing. Based on the same data on the normal sales added in SuperOffice, the only thing you have to remember is to tag it with the right selling partner if you have one. So this is how um, this will be used by each individual. The number of selling tar or uh, um, sales targets you want to add is totally up to you. And everyone doesn't need to see every type of target. So it's making targets focused for the job to be done by each individual. So that's the short story and the teaser about why you should go into uh, both um, the uh, sales targets and also why you could benefit how benefits from sales target unlimited. It's great to see some examples, Eric. Um, and this is also generally uh, generally available now, right? The sales targets unlimited. Yes, it is. So uh, 
just start playing around with it. Uh, and uh, if you want the unlimited, you will be prompted uh, to say, if you want unlimited, uh, fill in this form and we will get back to you and you will have the license in no time. Eric, what about people operating super office on their own premises? This is only available for our um, super office cloud customers. So yeah. uh, if you if this is the key benefit for your for your cloud uh, for no for your super office business, then you could move to the cloud. We will help you with that, right? <laughs> Absolutely. What else have you got up in your sleeve? Yes, I will try to move on here. It's um, time to talk about our new screen designer and configurable archives. This is what I'm talking about, a no-code way of customizing your solution. So by now, you can say that, okay, my company card, I would like to look this way with these fields. Uh, my contact card, I would like to look this way. I would like to design it myself. Now we can also take your project cards or your sales card and say, I would like this field to be placed there and I will use this field and remove that field. And also you can now get an additional dimension and see that, okay, um, direct sales um, uh, should look like this, but indirect sales should look like that. So you can also define this by the sale type or the project type or the user group. So it's quite flexible on how you can optimize the view of, of the super office screen based on the type of data you're looking at and based on the users that are looking at it. And when it also can add and remove all the archives, you know, the tabs below a main card and say, I would like to create a new archive and fill that with maybe only contract documents for a customer or something like that. You have flexibility built into the system that I think uh, is highly appreciated. And we see it by the adaption of these features that people really love it. Um, yeah, but what 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 does it mean? Why do we have it? And I think I already covered it. It says um, offer the right information to the right people. It's basically it. take away noise that is not interesting in the setting that you're in. Um, and this enables you to build a better um, process support. Say in this case, I would like this card to look like that and these tabs to show up. And in the other case, I, they will look different. And of course, it will help you keep uh, re retain the full 360 degree view of a customer, but uh, taking away noise that you don't want to to see there and then. So it's it's um, really a way to, of adapting and uh, yeah, focusing on the right things at the right time within SuperOffice without having to hire someone to. To, uh, to do this for you. Of course, you can call one of our consultants and they will help you out. Um, but it's, it's no programming involved. And that's my, my point in, in doing it. Um, a short uh, example on how easy it could be so you don't get scared. And remember, you cannot destroy any data here. You can always uh, play around with it and, and revert to factory settings if you, if you failed. Um, but basically, it's it's easy to play around with. In this scenario, I have said that I have gone into my maintenance and settings, and I have this uh, selected the tab called Screen Designer in the Navigator, and then the screen comes up, um, which uh, say what entity in SuperOffice would you like to focus on now? You like to configure your company, contact, sales, projects, or in the next uh, version, the request screen. And uh, in this case, I have said that I would like to play around with my uh, project cards because I have some project types, uh, webinars and conferences. They have other data than a normal delivery projects that I have. And this is the use case in this part. I would like to have all conference and 
webinar projects look a bit different, have a, another set of fields than all the others. So let's uh, play around with it and see how this uh, plays out. So I go and say, add a new layout. Um, I base it on the default layout and I give it a name. That's basically it. So these are, uh, I call it with a name, conferences. I said, okay, it's a conference and a webinar, who, uh, the type of project that's going to have this layout. And then I can uh, start editing that layout and say that, okay, um, in this case, I would like the type to be up in the header because it should be always visible. I want to make it large and uh, really visible. So that's uh, the first step I take. Then I will start to say, okay, how are these fields? The number field, I don't use that often for this. So I can either remove it or I can remove it to a place where I don't use it. But I have a budget field that is important to see on the main page. And of course, what else? Um, yeah, I have the event date, of course, which is specific to these kind of projects. They should really be up there on the front page. Sorry. Um, that's basically it. Now you have made a different layout of this screen for your product project screen uh, when it comes to webinars and conferences. So that easy, it could be done. Not scary, not uh, hard, but uh, you should play around with it to see how you can optimize your views inside SuperOffice. This is, uh, uh, I think, very interesting for many people, but they require the development tools to access this particular capability. Yes, it develops yeah. development tools, that's, uh, that's correct. But I don't find really any reason why someone shouldn't have development tools. Uh, it gives you such a wide uh, capabilities of making SuperOffice fit your uh, company needs. So um, that's a no brainer for me. <laughs> Absolutely. We have one more um, nugget to share, don't we? Yeah, I would like to also say something about uh, um, the document management part uh, that we have been working on. Um, people have, from time to time, told us that, okay, um, you can create super documents in SuperOffice and you can edit them, of course, and you can save it and find them later on. And, they love the fact that you can link a document to a sale or to a project or to a company and then retrieve them afterwards and, and use this as normal. But, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the <coughs> way of working with documents has changed. People would like to co-edit the document, work on the same document together at the same time, leaving their notes, changing their chapters, uh, also seeing revision history, sharing it with others. Uh, so the, the Windows 365 platform is unique for that. And they would really like to say that when I create the document inside SuperOffice, it should have all the capabilities that uh, you have if you use Windows 365 or the SharePoint document uh, platform. So that's what we've done. It's uh, free, it's out there, it's available for online uh, or uh, SuperOffice Cloud customers only, but uh, that's the nature of connecting clouds to clouds. So, so uh, this is a requisite. Um, and it basically, for a SuperOffice user, it's like it's always been, but you have all these additional bonuses of moving it in, into the SharePoint platform. So, Using uh, collaboration functionality, having one common repository for your whole, whole company. So everything could be fine within your SharePoint site. Uh, and of course, no need for locally installed software because you are doing this through your, your browser. So you don't have to use web tools or install web tools on your computer if you have moved your document library into say, your SharePoint. Okay, so uh, seeing is believing, right? And we will have to, uh, I will just show you something that every SuperOffice user does all the time when he works with documents. Uh, so let's uh, 
just say here, I will create a new normal document as I'm used to. Um, I connected to my project or to my sales. I write my title and uh, just opens the document or creates it. It will then, as you're used to, open in Word because this is a Word document, but it will open in the SharePoint version of Word or the online version of Word uh, browser. You can, of course, say edit in desktop app if you have that, but you just work with your document as you always done. Um, and uh, when you're finished, uh, you have it inside SuperOffice as any normal document and you see it in the preview and you can just double click to open it. If you move inside SharePoint, you will see that uh, uh, when the page is reloaded, that the document turns up in SharePoint as any other SharePoint document. And you can access it from within the SharePoint site and SuperOffice documents there. Uh, you can navigate here in SharePoint and you can also see all the data fr coming from SuperOffice has been transferred into the SharePoint properties of these documents. So you can start building views and search for actually SuperOffice data within SharePoint. And another example here is I, this is a document I wrote to Camilla Bowman and I can search here and it will automatically give me these properties because they are transferred from SuperOffice. And you see in this document, I wrote the text hello to a person called Bowman and it will be found directly inside this, uh, your SharePoint. So, Combining the power of creating SuperOffice based on document templates, ending up in SharePoint where people can work together on it, see revisions, uh, get the restore a backup of the document if you've done something wrong, and also search across it, build SharePoint views to share with other users, even push them into Microsoft Teams to have maybe a document space for each project or something. So the number of capabilities has really opened up by switching document management, uh, not only being an isolated SuperOffice thing, but moving it uh, across the whole platform, both from SuperOffice and from Microsoft uh, 365. That's great. Now, this and all the features that you talked about today are so valuable for so many people, and they certainly reflect the product vision you shared with us earlier. Now, we of course know that there are more to come, but can you share a little bit about the upcoming roadmap for us? You know, in SuperOffice, we, we don't really love to, to talk a lot about things not there yet. But as you saw from the roadmap, there are three major projects and one of them is going to be available in uh, as at least as a pilot in Q1 next year, and that's the new edition of service. It's merging request management into the main SuperOffice client so that you have a seamless way of working with requests, incoming requests, both if you are a, a service agent, but also if you are working in marketing and get your leads in there, or if you're working on, in sales and get uh, questions from your customers that you would like to address right away. So this is maybe the biggest uh, launch we will have early next year. And uh, we have also started these two other projects here, which uh, they are really fun to, to start digging into, but we have respect for the size of them. So we will launch also these in, in steps, but uh, we will remake the diary and the appointment and invitations so that it's uh, less clicks, more obvious how to do it and a more guided way of working with activities and, and appointments. Uh, and last but not least, the marketing automation flows is, is um, a key element of the next year's roadmap. So we will we have already started, but uh, this is a bigger project that will have to, but we will deliver something during next year. Well, this is fantastic. So that's basically it. And if you're curious about uh, what, just follow you guys. Yeah. To see what... Uh, 
what comes up. You are so good at picking up small and big changes that should benefit you uh, as a super office user. Now, this is brilliant, and we can't wait to share some of those news uh, next year. Uh, and as you said, if you're curious to know a little bit more details, there there's lots of uh, information in our product roundups and all the additional information that we provide around that. Now, before we round up for today, uh, we actually do have one small new, uh, small but important uh, new piece of uh, improvement to share with everybody. Yeah, um, uh, your team, Eric, uh, have also made some improvements on how uh, we search in the navigation bar and the free text field. Uh, and we have been using and loving this improvement internally. Uh, and now we're ready to share uh, this feature with everyone. That's correct. Um, the feature is pushed to all existing uh, uh, SuperOffice Cloud customers already. Um, uh, it will be pushed to all on-site customers just after Christmas, on the first release after Christmas. And it's basically all about uh, trying to build a better search experience when you use the free text search in the header or in the navigator. Uh, the main thing is you should never have to type percent something to, to say contains. It should understand that by default. You should be able to search through a wider set of attributes. So if I type in a project number, it should find the project, not having to type the correct name or remember the correct name. Or if I type an address, I could give get. I know that they are in Oslo and they were named uh, like computer something. So you can type computer in Oslo and it will give you the suggested things there. So play around with it, see if it's... Uh, gives you what you expect. Uh, um, it should be like a Google search, uh, really, when it comes to the different things. You shouldn't really have to be careful about what you type in. You should type in what's natural for you. If it's a start of a last name and beginning of a company name, and it should give you everyone who's named that and works in that company. So you shouldn't really care about what you type it should be as helpful as possible to to give you the things that you would like to do and this is basically implemented through the navigator search and also on the free text search on the top bar of superoffice okay so it's not applied everywhere like for example in dialogue not yet not yet and mailing um, but uh, screen by screen they will be uh, in there but uh, the starting point of searching in superoffice when you want to end up with one thing one person one company one sale or something is usually through the navigator or the free text search that is the starting point That's great. And I suspect that many users will be glad uh, when they can stop using the, the secret um, percentage assigned to free text search. Uh, so I think this is great. Yeah, news. it's something that you need I to agree. learn specifically and remember and not having to care about that, I think is great news. And so far, people have uh, been giving very good feedback on it. That's great. I think this too is an example of the ways that uh, through the product you look to improve and help people do more and be more productive in their everyday tasks. I love it. Now, all all of this has been brilliant. Thank you so much, Eric. And, and with that, we'd basically like to say thank you to everybody to take their time and listen to this and to learn more about what's recent and new features available in SuperOffice. So till next year, happy holidays. Bye. Bye.